Last October, I took you on a journey to show you how I killed out two thirds of my lawn, all in the name of planting three varieties of grass. Baron Brugg's RPR, their new blend that has yet to come out with, which is a blend of CSI and RPR, uh, spreading ryegrass, and also the Ryan Noor Elite Turf Grass. And I am proud to say <laughs> this lawn's looking pretty awesome. If you guys are interested in watching all the details, hit the card above that takes you to my playlist that will show you where I used glyphosate to kill two thirds of my lawn out. Then we ended up scalping it down, scarifying it, seeding it, and then using tenacity so we didn't have a bunch of annual grasses coming back through it. Now today, I'm showing you my results. <laughs> well, here we are exactly two weeks after I planted the grass and we had a lot of drama involved. <laughs> um, about <clears throat> seven days in, we had temperatures that got below 25 degrees. I think it hit like 22. And I got really worried because it, it froze everything over. I knew germination had already occurred. Typically with ryegrass, it's about five to seven days at ground temps above 55. But you can see, not a lot of movement. Now, initial germination goes to Ryan Noor's blend was faster. Now, I talked about this before I planted. I'm not concerned who wins on the germination. There's so many controversial topics about that on who germinates faster and why it's beneficial if it doesn't and why it's beneficial if it does. But I don't know how well that you guys can see this here, but a lot more going on on the Ryan Noor side than the Berenbrug side. So this is the Berenbrug side. And when we get into close to the concrete, it actually got hotter. You can see all my little baby sprouts and it's sprouting a ton, which is awesome. The further you get in, it's harder to see all the growth, but there is a shocking amount of growth that is occurring even at the temperatures that we are at. So not a loss whatsoever. When we come over here to the Ryan North side, it's much more visible. And if we go right on the dividing line where water's equal and we've got uh, the same amount of sunlight, you can see visibly much more green on the North side. This is the Berenbrug side. This is the North side. So the grass is coming in a lot faster and there's visibly more of it on the Ryan North side than the Berenbrug side. Um, when you come in here, you can really see the stems and everything all nice and green. Really happy to see that. And then when we get down in here, looking very, very closely, I'm not sure you guys are gonna pick this up on camera, but you can visibly see all the new growth that's occurring but it's very, very small at this point. Super excited to see both grasses coming in so aggressively considering the freeze. And I really wanted to see if that rumor was actually true or not that, oh, if the first freeze come, it kills everything off. Well, you can see it doesn't. I'm sure if we got down below 10 degrees, we might have a problem, but so far so good since we hit 22 degrees. Uh, and it wasn't like it hit 22 degrees one day. It was about three days in a row, and we've consistently been below 34 degrees. After the grass started budding, we got record amounts of snow. And the ginger wasn't smart enough to come out here with the snowblower. Matter of fact, I did the opposite and put snow all over the yard, <laughs> trying to get it off of my driveway. I hadn't seen my lawn almost the entire winter due to the amount of snow that we have, which is uncharacteristic for my region of Utah. When I came out in the spring, I was a little taken back. Once the ground temperatures got to about growing temps of 40 degrees, I noticed one big problem. Only about 40% of the CSI RPR germinated and 65% of the Ryan Noor Elite turf grass germinated. Now, I documented this, I filmed all of it, the Ryan North side was extremely thin. Um, the CSI's area was just bald. 
and it was pretty awesome to see how much germination that we actually got considering the soil temps were maybe 35 degrees to 39 degrees on a good day. So considering the fact that Ryanor Elite Turf Grass had as much grass as it did, I'm amazed. It was an awesome process. It was great to find out that it's possible you can get seed germination in that low of temperatures. Our nighttime temperatures were about 25 degrees and our daytime temperatures were about 37 uh, to 40 degrees maximum. I mean, the snow was not melting. So I went through, redid the entire process. Uh, I went through, dethatched, I re-scarified both sides, ended up putting grass seed down and peat moss and some more tenacity down to reseed in the spring. But as luck would have it, my SD card went bad. I was able to use some software to get some thumbnail pictures of the clips. And that's what you're viewing right now. Starting to purdy up, bleeding green, baby. Bleeding green. Guys, these results that I got from both the Nor brand and the uh, research upgrade to the Berenberg RPR is amazing. Now this has been such a fun project. Here's our transition zone right here. We've got the RPR on the far right. We've got the new up and coming RPR between this zone right here to the right. And to the left, we have the Rhinor Elite Turf Grass. And I dare say from an Eagle's point of view, it's hard to tell the difference in color. Now, right off the bat, I wanna make it very clear. Every treatment that I've done on this lawn, which has only been three, has been the same. It's been the Pro-Peat 10010 Fertilizer, the Rapture 404 Iron, and I've done a preventive fungicide treatment due to the fact that we had to reseed, which I showed you earlier, but the results are actually pretty awesome. One of my favorite things about any perennial ryegrass is they, they suck in fertilizer, fungicides, and iron like I've never seen before. One little fun side project that we've been doing is the uh, Luba AI mower chewed the living crap out of my lawn. And I'm using this as a good opportunity to see how much this ryegrass is going to spread out. Now on the north side, I'm not expecting much. I'm actually expecting to have to, to oversee this. But on the CSI, this is going to prove our point that it's very similar to Kentucky bluegrass on how it fans out. So we're going to leave this here and just kind of watch. Here's a close up of the RPR. Very, very green, very thick. <laughs> you can't expect much, much more than that. Here's a close up of the blended CSI RPR. And again, super thick, super healthy. I dare say it's a tad bit thicker than the RPR, uh, but it's, it's really, really hard to tell. Nice and soft on the feet. Here we are on the Ryan Noor Elite Turf Grass. Again, super, super clean. Grass came in pretty thick. It is not quite as thick as the RPR. And one thing I absolutely love about ryegrass is this stuff stripes like a boss. I mean, the, the grass blades are a little bit finer than Kentucky bluegrass and they're softer. They're more malleable and it just lays down. I took my uh, my outlet mower. I'm not really mowing the grass or even doing anything other than just using the roller. And oh my gosh, it always looks like a million bucks after I'm done. So here's the deal. From all angles, the grass is beautiful. All three species are looking really, really good. They're testing phenomenally well. I don't want to come to any direct conclusions right now, especially on which one could be better than the other because we really don't know. We're still dating. We're still getting to know these things. But I'd love for you guys to hit me up in the comments below on what you would like to see tested, what you want to see. I've had my kids out here. We've been having water balloon fights. They've had their cleats on it. We've, uh, we've really been going the ranks. But right now, man, 
I am one happy ginger. But guys, let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. You know, I'd love to help you guys out. Till next time, guys, with the Pest and Lawn Ginger. We're slaying lawns, especially mine. <laughs>